As much as we want to believe we choose movies because of intriguing stories instead of A-list stars, that often isn't the case. And casting the right person for a role means choosing an actor who can pull off the character convincingly and be bankable enough to sell lots of tickets. But Hollywood isn't perfect, and there are times they get it wrong, or pretty close to it. These hit films nearly went in very different directions with leading roles, only to make a clutch casting change that made them the blockbusters they are today. Liam Neeson in Lincoln now that he starred in three Taken movies, it can be easy to forget that Liam Neeson is a serious dramatic actor, with an Oscar nom for his performance in Schindler's List. And while his appearance in Life's Too Short proves he's not nearly as humorless as his characters on screen, sometimes it's the actor who knows when a part just isn't right. After the success of Schindler's List, director Steven Spielberg tapped Neeson to lead another dramatic historical project, Lincoln. I like our chances now. Neeson admitted to GQ of the table read for the film, I read very, very poorly by any standards, but then some people come up afterward and say, Oh, you're made to play Lincoln. I was just cringing with embarrassment. Ultimately, Neeson stepped away and the part went to Daniel Day-Lewis, who won an Oscar for the role. Shall we stop this bleeding? Neeson said, I was thrilled that Daniel played him, and when I saw the film, I was like, He's f***ing Abraham Lincoln. This is perfect. David Schwimmer in Men in Black Men in Black further cemented Will Smith as one of the biggest movie stars of the 90s, adding another hit to an incredible run that also included Bad Boys and Independence Day. His performance was spot on, in what might have otherwise been a ridiculous alien flick for kids. Like if, say, Ross from Friends had tried to pull it off. You know what the difference is between you and me? I make this look good. David Schwimmer was offered the role, but turned it down because he was already starring in and directing the dramedy Since You've Been Gone. If you feel bad for Schwimmer missing out on a colossal payday, remember that Smith passed on playing Neo in The Matrix to play the lead in Wild Wild West. We all make mistakes. Frank Sinatra in Dirty Harry until a few years ago, the rumor that Frank Sinatra was cast to play the title role in the 1971 cop drama Dirty Harry was just that, a rumor. But in 2015, Academy Award-winning director William Friedkin confirmed on Alec Baldwin's podcast Here's the Thing that before Eastwood it was old blue eyes. My producer, a guy named Phil D'Antoni, he and I were going to do Dirty Harry with Frank Sinatra, and then Sinatra pulled out. According to Yahoo Movies, film critic Ty Burr's book, Gods Like Us, explained Sinatra's reasoning as, A broken wrist sustained during the Manchurian Candidate eight years earlier meant that old blue eyes couldn't hold the heavy magnum pistol comfortably. Far better known as a singer, Sinatra earned acclaim as an actor, but tough guy parts weren't exactly his forte. You've got to ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? Britney Spears and The Notebook the movie that launched Ryan Gosling's movie career almost never happened. The Notebook hit a major hiccup during filming when Gosling asked the director to bring in a different actress because he wasn't getting along with co-star Rachel McAdams. Wait a minute, we're not really breaking up, are we? Come on. This is just a fight we're having and tomorrow to be like it never happened, right? Director Nick Cassavetes told VH1, He's doing a scene with Rachel and he says, Would you take her out of here and bring in another actress to read off camera with me? I can't do it with her. I'm just not getting anything from this. We went into a room with the producer, they started screaming and yelling at each other, I walked out. In the end, Gosling and McAdams shelved their differences. But before they made up, Gosling screen tested with an old friend from the Mickey Mouse Club, Britney Spears. Gosling confirmed Spears was up for the role, telling E.T., I hadn't seen her really since she was about 12. We were both 12, so she's grown up. But she was really good, actually. Pleasantries aside, the driving force behind The Notebook's success was the acting, and an inexperienced Spears likely couldn't have carried the role. Molly Ringwald in Pretty Woman When it came time to cast Pretty Woman, production had to choose between two incredible actors. Responding to questions on a Reddit AMA, Molly Ringwald admitted she was once under consideration for the lead role in the movie. With credits like The Breakfast Club and Pretty in Pink to her name, few could contend that Ringwald wouldn't have done a fantastic job. But Julia Roberts ended up winning the part and walking away with the movie. You are in fact a hooker, and you are my employee. Look, you don't owe me, I decide, okay? I say who, I say I... when, I say who! Even Ringwald agrees, saying, Julia Roberts is what makes that movie. It was her part. Every actor hopes for a part that lets him shine like that. Tom Selleck in Raiders of the Lost Ark George Lucas, who co-wrote the Steven Spielberg-directed Raiders of the Lost Ark, didn't want Harrison Ford to star as Indiana Jones. In a making-of featurette, Spielberg remembered, I had just seen a cut of Empire Strikes Back and said to George, that's Indiana Jones right up there, Han Solo. Why can't he do it? And Lucas told Spielberg, he's, he's identified as Han Solo. Let's leave him as Han Solo. And I said, yeah, but he's an actor. Actors play 
hundreds of different characters in there. Ford was cast, but only as a replacement for their first choice, Tom Selleck, who had already been cast as Indy. Selleck told David Letterman that CBS made him turn down the role in favor of their show, Magnum P.I. Selleck told Letterman, And the more they held out the offer and talked to the network, the more the network said no. Mm. So, um, eventually... The uh, network, of course, being CBS. CBS yeah, and, right here. And, yeah. uh, but at this point, it's impossible to imagine anyone but Ford cracking that whip. Eric Stoltz in Back to the Future. Michael J. Fox, who was booked solid at the time with his hit NBC sitcom Family Ties, came very close to not getting his big screen breakout in Back to the Future. Forced to go without his first pick for leading man, director Robert Zemeckis originally cast Eric Stoltz in the role of Marty McFly. It's an absolute dream. Production began with Stoltz playing Marty, but the crew knew something just wasn't right, and Zemeckis worked out a deal with NBC for Fox to film around his family ties schedule and replace Stoltz, who'd already filmed a number of scenes. Stoltz took it hard, but in 2016, eagle-eyed fans noticed something. Stoltz made the final cut. In their scene when Marty punches Biff in the diner, that's Stoltz throwing the punch. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.